Hi everybody, welcome to your next lesson. We're going to start with a fun warm up again and today it's called My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. You might already know the song but I'm going to sing it to you just in case you don't. It goes like this. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. So bring back my Bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. Do you already know it? Tell you what. I'll help you learn it. I'll sing a bit and you copy it back. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. So bring back my Barney to me. So bring back my Barney to me. Let's do all of that all the way through. That's the first half of the song. Here we go. My Barney lies over the ocean. My Barney lies over the sea. My Barney lies over the ocean. So bring back my Barney to me. Got it? The second half, I'll do a line you copy it back. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me. Let's do that second half all the way through together. Here we go. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me. That's it all the way through. So should we go from the beginning to the end now, all the way through those words? Here we go. My Barney lies over the ocean. My Barney lies over the sea. My Barney lies over the ocean, so bring back my Barney to me. Bring back, bring back, oh bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, oh bring back my Barney to me. So by now hopefully you've all got that song. So should we just make it a bit more interesting now? After all these warm-ups have to be fun, don't they? So you're standing up hopefully to sing this. If not, you need to stand up now. Push your chairs under your desks if you're at desks or just make sure you're, you've got a space. Okay, we're going to sing it all again. But this time you've got to think about the letters that the words begin with. Every time you sing a word that begins with the letter B, if you're standing, you're going to bend. If you're already bent, you're going to stand. Okay, so when we do bring back, it'll be bring back. So there's a bit of bobbing up and down to go. <laughs> Shall we try it? So every time you think the letter word that begins with the letter B, you're either moving up or moving down. Here we go. My body lies over the ocean. My Barney lies over the sea. My Barney lies over the ocean. So bring back my Barney to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Barney to me. Are you standing? 
You should be standing at the end. Hopefully you got that. If not, you can always rewind and have another go. So you make it even harder. This time, you're still going to bend for the Bs, but every time you come to a word that starts with a letter O, you're going to clap as well. Okay, so you're going to clap on an O and you're going to bend on a B. Good luck. Here we go. My Barney lies over the ocean. My Barney lies over the sea. My Barney lies over the ocean. So bring back my Barney to me. Bring back, bring back, oh bring back my Barney to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, oh bring back my Barney to me. Oh dear, that's tricky. Hopefully you got all that right and you're ready for your instruments in the next clip. For our ukulele warm-up today, we're going to get a bit clever. We're going to remember our C, F and G chord. But rather than just you copying me in different patterns, we're going to try and play each chord following the rhythms that I've got behind me. You might remember these cards from a few lessons earlier. We were looking at walks and jogging, or did I call them march and jogging, and we were reading rhythms. When you get a pair together like this, that's your jogging, and on your ukulele that will be your down and up. When you get a single one on its own, that's your march, and on the ukulele that will be a single up, down. So what you've got here is jogging, march, jogging march which on your ukulele will be down up down down up down practice that one with me right now ready steady here we go jogging march jogging march sorry i was on a c chord i think i might have forgotten to tell you that find your c chord and do it once more for me here we go down up down down up down the next card March, march, jogging, jogging. On your ukulele, down, 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 up, down, up. Still on the C chord? Here we go. Down, 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 up, down, up. Third card, jogging, jogging, march, march. On your ukulele, down, up, down, up, down, down. Ready, C chord, steady, have a go. Down, up, down, up, down, down. And the fourth card, march, march, jogging, march on your ukulele. Down, 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 up, down. On the C chord, have a go. Down, 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 up, down. Let's put all four cards together. Find your C chord and see if you can get all the way through from the beginning to the end. Ready, steady, here we go. Down, up, down, down, up, down. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Did you follow that? Let's do it on an F chord. Find your F. Give you a second or two to remember the F chord. Second finger, fret nearest your face. Uh, second fret string nearest your face. First finger, third string, first fret. Follow that pattern then. On an F chord. Ready, steady, here we go. Down, up. And on the 
G chord. Do you need a second or two to get your G ready? Slip your third finger up a string. First finger, second fret, second finger, second fret. Ready to the pattern? Ready, steady, here we go. Jogging march, jogging march, 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 jumping, 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 march, 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 jumping, march. And let's finish it one more time with a C chord all the way through. Ready, steady, off you go. Now the ultimate challenge then, we're going to do it four times. The first time all the way through on the C, the second time all the way through on the F, all the way through on the G, and back to C. So that's four times all together. C, F, G, C. Without stopping. <laughs> Ready, steady, C chord, here we go. Try everyone. So far in today's lesson, we've been looking at chords and rhythms. We're going to not touch chords again today. Instead, we're going to look at a melody. Now, you might remember the difference between chords and melodies. Chords, a group of notes played at the same time. Melody is single notes. Remember how we did C? We're going to go back over the notes that we've learned individually and see if we can make a tune out of them. Let's start with C because we did play that on its own. So without the chord, just the A string, string number four, nearest the floor, third finger on it, you've got your thumb about to pull a single string, look. Do that with me. There's your C. We learned that the second finger there, and you can of course have two fingers on at the same time, but take your third off so you've just got your second finger on. That was the note B. So just with my thumb pulling that string, there's a B. You can take your finger off so that you've got absolutely no fingers, just a plain, what we call open string. That will give you your A. And we also learned to play a G separately. That was when we did our Batman, I think it was. And you move your third finger across to string number three, so up one, in exactly the same place as the C, but now we are on the uh, E string, and you get this. So I've changed the string with my thumb up down here. I've got my third finger on up here, and there's your G sound. Not a G chord, just one G note. So I'm going to go from G and I'm going to go back up to the top. So it would be G, A, B, C. I can do it backwards. And I can go up. <laughs> you want to try that with me? Let's go down. So it's three, two, non, and then cross over to three again. So here we go. It's a three. It's a two. It's an A and cross over until we climb back up. So it's your G, it's your A, it's your B, and it's your C. Okay? 
There's a little song that we're actually going to learn. It's called the Hokey Cokey. Was it the Hokey Cokey? Do you know it? You put your left arm in, you right arm in, in, out, in, out, you shake it all about. You do the Hokey Cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. You ready to have a learner with that with me? I only used the four notes. So I started off on a C and I stayed there. You put your left you left arm out, in, out, in, out, and hold it there. <laughs> Try it with me. Here we go. You put your left arm in, you left arm out, in, out, in, out. So you just play the notes as you move your mouth. Left arm in, left arm out, in, out, in, out. Okay? Now you shift down to your second finger now. Shake it all about. Just three strums, three plays. Shake it all about. Do that with me, here we go. Shake it all about. So let's go back to our C's. Here we go. You put your left arm in, you left arm out. In, out, in, out, you shake it all about. Got it? Watch the next bit. You do the okie dokie and you do Two sets of three. You do the okey dokey and you turn around. Here we go. You do the okey dokey and you turn around. Should we go from the beginning? Here we go. You put your left arm in, your left arm out. In, out, in, out, you shake it all about. You do the okey dokey and you turn now the next bit's the hardest bit. Watch this. That's what it's all about. I climbed up. I started on my G. That's what it's all about. G, G, A, B, C. Try it with me. Find your G. G, G. Now cross to your A. No fingers. Second finger. Third finger. That's the tricky bit. You might want to pause it here and have another go at that. G, G, A, B, C. If you need to pause it, do that now and come back to me in a second. Hopefully you've practiced that and you can play it with me that that's what it's all about. Here we go. Ready, steady, here we go. G, G, A, B, C. We're going to play it all the way through. Are you ready? On the C, just watch me closely. Come on the A string. Here we go. You put your left arm in, your left arm out. In, out, in, out, you shake it all about. You do the okey dokey and you turn around. Here we go. That's what it's all about. You need to practice that because the next bit that they go, no, oh, do the okey dokey. We're going to do it with chords. Oh, I did say we weren't going to do chords, didn't I? Just for this bit, we're going to do chords. So I've been having a think and I have changed my mind. We're not going to do chords. We're going to sing because it's more fun. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to play with the music and the left arm in. We're going to do that playing the tune. Then when it gets to it, it goes, Oh, do the okey cokey. What you're going to do is you're going to take hold of your ukulele because you don't have a strap like me, like we usually have your ukulele like this, and you're going to lift it up and down. It's going to go, Oh, do the okey cokey. Oh, do the okey cokey. Oh, do the okey cokey. Knees bend, arms stretch, rah, rah, rah. And you can nod your head on the rah, rah, rah. Splash, splash. So much easy to do, isn't it? They're trying to learn chords to fit with that. Chords, eh? Oh. Right, put my strap back on and let's see if we can do it all the way through. So you play the tune, you have fun singing and putting your uke in the air, you play the tune again and you finish by singing and putting your uke in the air. So let's do it with the music right now. Get your third finger ready. <laughs> Sing 
to do some note reading with you especially as we've just been playing melodies and I want you to see what these melodies might look like when they're written down or at least the notes of the melodies so behind me safety pinned up to my curtains I've got a massive music reading uh, what we call a manuscript or music chart music staves and I'm just going to talk you through what you see First of all, we've got four lines. One to the end, two, three, four. Each stave has got five small lines. So this is a stave and it's got five lines. This is a stave and it's got five lines, etc. etc. This stave at the top is divided up into four small sections. Section one, section two, section three, section four. We call these sections bars and we call the lines that divide the sections bar lines. Bar line, bar line, bar line, bar line at the end. So this top stave has got four bars in it and so is this one and the one and the fourth one at the bottom. At the start of the stave there's this rather pretty squiggle. This is called a treble clef. A treble clef. And it tells us that we're about to play high sound on a high sounding instrument. There's another type of clef called a bass clef and if you're going to play something low like um, a bassoon or a cello, something deep, then you'd have a different squiggle at the beginning. But this is the high sounding squiggle, this is the treble clef. Every bar must add up to the same number of beats and I'll come to that in just a moment. But first of all, we'll have a look at the lines and what they mean. Every time you play a note on your instrument it will be somewhere around these five lines. I've got a note here, I've got a march note, it's just a single note on its own and I can pop it anywhere. I could stick it at the top there. That would be a high sound because it's right on the top line. I could stick it all the way down here underneath the bottom line and that would be a low sound because I put it low down and I can put them anywhere I like on these five lines and according to where I put it will make it a high or a low sound. So I've just put four random marches in there it's a bit like reading a book. You'd start at the beginning and then you move along the line. Whoops, I've done it. I must be sticky on that one. You move along the line to read the notes. So you'd read them in this order. Starting at the beginning, you go high, low, high, low. So you read it like that. This bar has got four march notes in it. And a march is just one beat. So we've got one, two, three, four beats in that bar. High, low, high, low. And that's all I'm going to put. I don't want any more beats. That bar now adds up to four. Done. Let's 
alter the position of these notes. So rather than having just sort of anywhere random high and low, I'm going to be really, really careful with where I put my blobs. I'm going to bring this one and I'm going to put it underneath the bottom line, like that. I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to cross the bottom line. So it's basically gone up a tiny bit. I'm going to bring this one down and put it in between the bottom line and the second line. So that's gone up again a tiny bit. And finally, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put that up again and it's going to cross the second line. So that's gone up a tiny bit. My notes now look as if they're going up the stairs. They're not random high, low, high, low. They're definitely following a stepping up pattern. And that's how music works. You can put a note crossing a line. You can put a note in between the lines. They're called lines and spaces. So this pattern is under a line, so that's in a space. This is on the line. This is in the space. This is on the line. And I could carry on all the way to the end, space, line, space, line, space, line, gradually getting higher and higher and higher. D is under the bottom line. E crosses the bottom line. F in between the bottom two lines. And G is on the second line. Okay? Those are the four notes that we were just doing on our violin. D, E, F sharp, G. There is another sign for a sharp, but I won't worry you about that right now. F sits in between the bottom two lines, all right? So if I was to just randomly place another note, for instance, here, can anybody work out what note I've just placed down? It's in between the bottom two lines. Remember what I did here, D, E, F, G. So this one is the same as this one. So it must be F. Let's put another one down. Let's put one here. Anybody got any clues? It's under the bottom line. It's the same as this one. This was D. So this must be D. Let's do another one. Take one of my notes. And I'm going to put it, let's put a bigger one. Let's try a different one. Put one stone to here. Let's try this one here. This one. Anybody? It crosses the second line. Just like this one does. D, E, F, G. So this one must be G. That just leaves one more note that I haven't done in this bar. Um, do you remember which one it is? It's an E like that. All right. So those are four notes for you to remember. If you remember that the D starts underneath the bottom line, you can gradually work out how to do the others by putting the notes one step higher each time. Okay. Now these are all march notes, but I could also use jogging notes. I've got some joggings here, look. <laughs> so let's say if I tried to fill the last bar, I could put a pair of joggings maybe on this note here, second line. Oh, can you see that? So what are my joggings on there? We worked it out. Second line, G's, pair of G's. Let's get another pair of joggings and I think I'll put them one step lower. I'll move out the way in a second. There we go. One step lower. So that pair of joggings is on F sharp. Um, to finish it off, I don't think I'll do joggings. I think I'll do a couple more walks. I'll have a walk on an 
E and I'll have a walk or a march on a D. That bar looks complicated at the end, doesn't it? Jogging, jogging, march, march. We're actually getting lower. G, G, F, F, E, D. Now, there's a reason that I have been telling you about um, how to read music. And that's because I'm sending through to your teachers a sheet that looks like this. Okay, there's that treble clef at the beginning and along each line this is one bar. So I've got one bar, two, three, four, five. There are no bar lines, look, but this is one long bar. And behind I'm also sending this to your teachers. I've got four different rhythms here, a bit like those cards that we had the start at the lesson. Now your job is you are going to compose a piece of music. Ever so easy. First of all, on each line, each bar, you're going to decide which note, whether you'd like a D, an E, an F or a G. You decide which note you want and then you choose which rhythm you'd like it on. So if you decide you'd like G to start off with, you remember that a G is on the second line and you copy the rhythm on that note. Okay? And you do the same for each, each bar. So you have five bars all together. Now you've only got four notes, D, E, F and G, so one of them you'll have to repeat. It's up to you which one you repeat. So line one could be all Ds with the rhythm of your choice. Line two, you could do all Es. Line three, you could do all Fs. And line four, you could do Gs. And then you could choose whichever note you want again for line five. All right? And then when you've done that, you might be able to play it. But that will come another day. So hopefully you've understood that. And I'm sure if you haven't, I'm sure your teachers have. So maybe they could help me explain so that you get it. So you're all going to get one of these. And you're all going to get one of these, hopefully. And you can choose which note and which rhythm you want it on. And you combine the two to give yourself, um, that's a bit more complicated, isn't it? Because I've changed it. But you combine yourself to give them a rhythm, a, a, a tune that you've made up. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Have a go. Um, and we'll talk about it next week. Anyway, listen, we're finished now. So enjoy your time. Keep practicing and I'll see you soon.